Hi, I'm Ema from iDoc. Is the back cover of your iPhone broken or scratched? This video shows you how to repair the rear glass. The repair is difficult because there are many glued parts and small screws that you should not mix up. You should plan about one and a half to two hours. We recommend the following tools. A Phillips, a white type and a pentalobe screwdriver, a plastic pick, a spudger, ESD tweezers, a steel spatula and a suction cup. We also recommend a heat gun or a hair dryer to remove strongly glued parts. You can find the required spare part in the video info. The most important tools, together with our iDoc magnetic pad, come in our repair kit. On our website, iDoc.eu, you can find this guide with detailed photos and videos for each step. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comment box below. And now, enjoy this fix. Before you start, you should have all your tools ready. Also work on a clean surface to prevent dirt from entering and scratching the iPhone. Before any repairs, you should turn off your iPhone to avoid short circuits. Now you can remove the pentalobe screws. To soften the display glue, use a heat gun or a hair dryer. The glue is around the edges of the display. Heating lets you remove the display more easily. Now take the suction cup and stick it on the display above the home button. Then pull on the suction cup while pressing a tool into the gap between the display and the frame. Once you've stuck the pick between the glass and the back cover edge, you can run the pick all around the frame. This slowly unglues the display. Make sure not to stick the pick too far into the device when removing the display. Be extra careful not to damage the display connection cables. If the display of your iPhone is badly cracked, you should tape it. Take a strip of packing tape and paste it directly onto the splintered display. This gives the suction cup better hold. Once the glue is removed all around, you can open the display. You can also lean the display against an object. Make sure that your iPhone does not slip away. Don't unfold the display more than 180 degrees, otherwise the cables could be overstrained. Now, loosen the four Phillips screws of the bracket. Always pay attention to the size and type of the screws. Make sure not to mix them up. Using the wrong screws can damage your phone. We recommend using our iDoc magnetic pad to store the screws. Under the metal plate is the battery connector. You should always disconnect this first. We recommend a plastic spudger to unplug connectors. A plastic tool avoids short circuits. As long as the battery is still connected, the device has power. Wrongly connected display connectors may cause a short circuit. This can also damage your backlight. So always disconnect your battery to be safe. Now you can disconnect the cables of the display and the home button. Pull off the connectors as evenly as possible. Be careful not to bend the connectors and damage other parts of the logic board. Now remove the second bracket. Under the bracket are the connectors for the front camera and for the earpiece. Remove these with a plastic spudger. When all connections are off, you can remove the display. Remove the screws of the rear camera bracket and take it off. Carefully pry off the camera connector with a spudger. Remove the screws of the rear camera bracket and take it off. There are special screwdrivers for the standoff screws. You can also use a normal thin slotted screwdriver. To remove the camera, pry it out slowly around the edges. Now you can remove the camera.
Then disconnect the volume cable. First unscrew the bracket and take out the screws. Put everything in the same box of your magnetic pad. Then disconnect the volume cable from the logic board. Bend it up a bit so it doesn't get in the way when you remove the logic board. Now remove the plastic cover over the logic board. First remove its screws. One of the screws is screwed sideways into the back cover. Now remove the plastic cover. Under it there are some more screws that hold a kind of connection piece. Unscrew these screws. And also take out the connection piece. Unplug the antenna's connector from the board. Next, remove the Phillips screw securing the Wi-Fi antenna. The antenna is slightly glued on. Slide a spatula under the cable to carefully get it off. The glue is easier to loosen with hot air. Now take out the antenna. You still have to remove the SIM card holder to remove the logic board. Insert the SIM tool or a paper clip into the small hole. Now use a spudger to carefully unplug the three connectors on the logic board. They connect the charging coil, the lightning connector and the Taptic engine to the logic board. Now unscrew the Phillips and standoff screws on the logic board. Again be careful because they're not the same length. There is a special screwdriver with a centering pin for the standoff screws with the hole inside. But you can also use a thin slotted screwdriver. Now you can carefully remove the logic board. Make sure the three connectors don't get snagged on the logic board. Remove the Y-type screw and the two Phillips screws of the bracket plate. Then remove the bracket. Sort the screws to prevent mixing them up. Now use the spudger to unplug the flex cable. Be very careful. The connector is right in the middle of this flex cable. Now remove the different size Phillips screws for the speaker. Sort the screws to prevent mixing them up when reinstalling the speaker. Now you can take out the speaker and the flex cable. The speaker is slightly glued to the frame. Now you can pry off the Taptic engine connector. Now take out the Taptic engine so you can reach the adhesive strips on the battery. Remove the screws of the Taptic engine. One of them is also a standoff screw with a hole inside. Now the battery is free and you can unglue it and take it out. The battery is glued in with four adhesive strips. These strips have black tabs to pull them out. Use a pair of tweezers or a spatula to loosen the black tabs. Now you have to pull out the strips very slowly. Keep the strips as flat as possible and level with the iPhone. Be careful not to damage any components when pulling. If one adhesive strip rips, you have to carefully pry out the battery using a wide spudger. Try not to bend the battery so much. Hold on to the iPhone when pulling out the last strip so the battery doesn't fall out of the device. Once all adhesive strips are off, you can remove the battery. Unscrew the barometric vent and remove it from the device. The vent is glued to the case with a foam sticker which can tear. Now remove the lightning connector. Unscrew the various screws of the lightning connector flex cable. Two of these screws go into the case sideways. Sort the screws in the correct order to avoid swapping them later. The broad flex cable is glued to the back cover. Use hot air to release the glue and to get the cable out easier. Take a flat tool like a steel spatula or an eye flex and carefully slide it underneath the cable. Slowly release the flex cable and reheat if you feel any resistance. Gently pry the golden microphones from the case. Once everything is released you can take out the lightning connector. Now remove the cable for the standby and volume buttons. Unscrew the brackets of the buttons on the edges of the case. Sort the screws in the right order because they are not the same length. Remove the screw on the flash and microphone bracket. Remove this bracket. The flex cable is glued into the back cover. Heat it to get it out easier. 
Then push a flat, strong tool like the steel spatula under the cable to release it gradually. Be very careful because the cable is very thin and breaks easily. Also, remove the microphone and the flash, which are attached to the cable. Once the cable is released, take it out. Now unscrew the brackets for the display from the case. The brackets are fastened with two screws each. Remember their orientation so that you can reinstall them later. Now remove the bracket for the eyesight camera. Remove the screw and then take out the bracket. Now remove the buttons from the side of the case. First release one side of the little metal clip with your tweezers. Then you can pull it out on the other side. Sometimes it doesn't work so easily and the clip gets bent. In that case, just bend it back into shape before you install it. Then release the bracket underneath. Pry out one side first. Then you can twist it up and remove it. Now slide out the plastic pins and remove the button. Do the same thing with the other buttons. You have to reuse the wireless charging coil. This video shows you the procedure for the iPhone 8. It works just the same for the iPhone 8 Plus. This part consists of a big sticker with a copper coil in it. The sticker is glued around the edges. So first heat the edges and then run a flat tool around the whole coil. If you throw away the old back cover, you don't have to worry about the back cover getting scratched. Otherwise, you'd better use a plastic tool like the iPlastics because the paint is right under the coil. Once the edges of the coil are released, slide your tool all the way under the coil. It should come out easily. If not, heat again. Don't forget the small plastic pen of the SIM holder. Push it in from the outside and then remove it. Prepare the new back cover now. You may have to reuse small parts from the old device, such as the rubber gaskets around the speaker. Compare the new back cover with your old one to see if any parts are missing. Sometimes you may need to reuse small parts, like the plastic bezel of the flash. Also make sure that you reuse the rubber gasket of the microphone. It usually stays on the flex cable. We did not use a new back cover for this video. The procedure is just the same though. Stick the speaker gaskets to the lower edge. Insert the small pin for the SIM holder in the correct direction. Then paste the charging coil to the back cover as flatly as possible. Position it correctly so you can connect it to the logic board later. If the glue does not hold properly, heat it a little and then press it on. Now insert the buttons. First slide the plastic pins into the case and then attach the brackets. First place the bracket on one pin and twist it down so it engages. Lock the bracket with the small clip first on one side, then on the other. This takes a bit of patience and often doesn't work the first time. Now insert the eyesight camera bracket and fasten it with the screw that goes into the case sideways. Now fasten the brackets. Make sure you install them the right way around, otherwise the display won't fit properly later.
Now insert the flex cable for the standby and volume buttons and paste it to the case. Make sure the contacts are where the buttons are. Place the microphone and the flash in their openings and press them in. The gasket around the microphone has a small hole that fits exactly over a plastic pin in the back cover. Then attach and fasten the bracket of the flash. If the cable fits well, fasten the various screws for the buttons. Then insert the flex cable of the lightning connectors and press it on. If necessary, heat it to soften the glue. Make sure everything is in place and the flex cable is positioned right. Otherwise you won't be able to plug it to the logic board. Also stick the small microphones to the case. Then fasten the lightning connector's screws. Insert the barometric vent and press it to the case. Fasten the various screws of the vent. To fasten the battery properly and remove it again in case of another repair, we recommend that you use new adhesive strips. You can put the logic board into the back cover to help position the battery. You can also just reinstall all the parts before attaching the battery. Make sure the battery connector is directly over its socket on the logic board. To check the position of the adhesive strips, you can put them in the device first. Remove the large blue protective film and place the adhesive strips squarely on the bottom side of the battery. Make sure it's not too far up or down so you can easily fold over the tabs. Flip the battery over and remove the backing films of the tabs. Fold the tabs over and paste them to the upper side of the battery. Stick the tabs firmly to the edge of the battery. Then remove the large pink film from the adhesive strips. Now you can stick the battery into the back cover. Put in the battery with the upper edge first so the glue doesn't stick right away and you can still position the battery. Make sure the battery connector is over its socket on the logic board and leave some space on all sides. Once the battery is properly in place, you can press it down to make it stick. Take out the logic board again. Now you can reinstall all the parts. First put the Taptic engine back into the device. Plug in the connector and screw in the Taptic engine. Put the speaker back in its place and push it down to make it slide into its holder. Make sure the flex cable is positioned right between the battery and the speaker. Now you can fasten the speaker with the Phillips screws and plug it in. Don't forget to screw in the bracket for the connector. Put the logic board back in its place. The small plastic holder has to be on top of the board. Reinstall the logic board using the various screws. Put the three connectors back on their sockets. Press them down gently with your fingers so they click into place. Don't press harder if it doesn't work. Instead, lift up the connector and try again. Now insert the SIM tray. If it jams, check again if the logic board is properly seated. Next, put the Wi-Fi antenna back in. Press down the antenna a bit to make it stick and then plug it in. Then fasten the antenna screw. First of all, insert the small connection piece properly and then screw it in. Now you can insert the plastic cover and screw it in with the Phillips screws.
Then reconnect the volume cable connector. Don't forget to attach its bracket with the Phillips screws. Insert the rear camera and press it in to make it sit. Use the two screws to fasten the bracket. Then plug in the connector and attach the bracket. We also recommend using a new display sticker to restore the iPhone's protection against dust and spray water. First remove all old glue residue so the new glue will stick properly. However, note that the iPhone is not 100% water protected. Make sure the frame sticker is aligned correctly before pasting it on. Look at the corners to see which edges face up or down. Then position the film flush on the device and lightly press it down. Paste down the glue all around. Now you can also remove the second protective film layer. Check again if the frame sticker is positioned correctly and press it down again if necessary. Lift the tab and slowly pull off the last part of the protective film. Slightly lean the display against an object. Now you can plug in the connector. This is a little tricky because the cable is slightly twisted. Then attach and fasten the bracket. Now connect the cables for the display and home button. Try to position the cables correctly and not to slip over the socket. The connectors should snap into place with a slight click. The cables should not be overstrained. Now you can reconnect the battery. Now you can fasten the bracket. Use the four Phillips screws to fasten it. Then slowly fold the display down and close it. Make sure the display is positioned correctly before you press it down. Then press down the display all around to make it sit flush on the frame. Now you can fasten the two pentalobe screws. That was our fix and I hope you enjoyed it. You can find tools and spare parts on our website. If you have any questions or suggestions, just leave them in the comment box. We are always happy to help you out. If you found this guide helpful, subscribe and give us a thumbs up. And if any of your friends broke their phone, tell them about iDoc. We have repair guides for all common models. See you next time.